question. It's five. It's five o'clock. It's Wednesday. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Um, are we ready to go? We're ready. We're ready to go. This is Watch Me Work. It's five o'clock on Wednesday. Happy July. We've made it to July. I know, which is means um, that we're halfway through 2020. Is that right? Anybody correct me if I'm wrong. Um, yay, we're halfway through 2020. And um, we've been doing this show for 11 years in the lobby of the public theater. And now, long story short, now we are doing it in our homes or spaces and bringing it to your spaces. Thank you to the public theater. Thank you to HowlRound for organizing and helping make this all possible. This is what we do. We work together for 20 minutes and then we talk with you about your work and your creative process. So that's what we do. We do it every day, four or five days a week, year after year after year, because why? Because we love you. And that is true. And if you want to ask a question, Audrey's going to tell you how to get in touch. Go girl. Thanks SLP. Um, <laughs> if you want to ask a question and you are inside of the Zoom, all you need to do is click on the raise your hand button in the participant tab, likely at the bottom of your screen on a laptop or at the top if you're on an iPad or a tablet. If you're watching on HowlRound.tv, you can tweet at us at, at WatchMeWorkSLP with the hashtag HowlRound, H-O-W-L-R-O-U-N-D. Um, and you can also tweet at the Public Theater's Twitter, which is at Public Theater NY or right to the Public Theater's Instagram. And those are the ways. Blah, blah. And um, uh, we, we've had some, pub, some uh, ge special guests on Wednesday. Uh, today we have a special guest. It, it's Helen Keller, everybody. Helen Keller. If you don't know who Helen Keller is, use Party of 20 Minutes to find out. She's written uh, several books, but she's written a book on optimism. No, she will not be actually coming in and sitting beside me, but she will be present in her wonderful work of literature. If you haven't read this book, it's a great book to read. Uh, I don't get any money for plugging her material. She's amazing, and she says some really, really cool things in it. She, you know, she born and you know she was born in like like eighteen hundred and something, so she got a lot to say. This woman, anyway, that's our special guest today, Helen Keller. We're showcasing her book called Optimism. And um, it's interesting how she links optimism with work. If there is a lull in the question and answer uh, during that time, perhaps I'll read a little bit to you guys. If not, no worries. Here we are. Go.
right. All right. Here we are. Here we are. Are there any questions? Oh, goody. We've got some questions. Oh, goody. All right. We got Melania. Melania. Oh. Uh oh. Did it work? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Susan Lori. Hey, Melania. How are you? Fine. I'm, I'm fine. I want to, I know that I, I usually tell you, but I feel so blessed to watch me work. You are being such an important person in my life. I want to know oh, that. Thank you. Yeah, it's not only about my creative process, but it's helping a lot and all this group, but it's about myself and things that I am discovering about myself. And it, it, it is an adventure. You know, I am reflecting a lot and learning a lot, and I am very thankful. Then another thing that I am very happy that I saw Carol yesterday and the grandson is getting better. Uh, I was worried about so very happy about that. And then I want to ask a question about something that I kept I kept thinking after we talked a couple of days ago. Um, we were talking about the possibility of sharing my work with people that I trust. So they can really be done. So I, that helped me think. Because I, I write, my first language is Spanish. So okay. I, write, I write Spanish. And what happened to me was that I I entered to, I arrived to the United States. I, I fell in love with my husband. We got married. We had our children, the two first, our two first daughters, they were born in Argentina, in Buenos Aires, where I am from. So, and then we, I came here as an immigrant uh, with my family, with the, the, the girls who were very little. So in the middle of the transition to a new country, a new language, a new situation in life, being a mom, um, I, I, I don't want to say I quit uh, writing, but there were so many things that writing began to, to be something that I, I wasn't doing until after several years, I discovered Watch Me Work, and I, I remember tweeting, and and I was in my at that at that moment I was first in New Orleans where we were, and now in Miami. So I was in Miami and re rediscovered this necessity and this enjoyment that I have when I write. So what happened to me now is that the people I trust to read my work is people that is in Buenos Aires in Argentina, and we talked. Uh, and I love them and they love me, but it's been a long, long time since I present myself in front of them as, as a writer. It's been years. It's like, it's like another life. I, I don't know how to... And now I am in this situation that I am Melania, the same Melania, but I am discovering so many things about myself and my situation and uh, all these things that you say about the putting the mask first so I can put the mask and this taking care of myself and listening to my body and what is happening to my body that suddenly I discovered that I was exhausted and wasn't working well and something was happening. So now my question is, how can I approach respectfully to these people in order to give them something to write, but be, without being, I don't want to impose or and, and at the same time, I don't want to be like, okay, I am writing because these are things that I am writing, but they are first draft. It's not that I have something finished that I say, okay, but I have the trust to tell, what do you think about this? So it's a good thing to explain to them the situation and then present something or sending an email explaining and with the work and if they want to read, let them read it or not. I don't know how to, to go to them because I am still like discovering myself in all this situation. But at the same time, I want to be brave in order to say, okay, this is me and this is me. It's not that it's right or wrong, it's me, whatever it is. So I, I would like to, to listen to you. What do you think about the situation? I think it's beautiful that you have friends who love you and who care about you and they don't know the you that you've become, uh, you know, the full you that you've become. They might know a lot of things. I mean, I'm, I'm guessing they know you 
have children, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So your whole, it's not like you've kept your entire life, you know. No, from, no, no, they, they don't. They, so, they, so they know a lot about you, but they don't know everything about you. I wonder if it's possible to um, do something like a Zoom call. Okay. And just start talking about your writing, maybe. You know, like in a hangout, you know, do you Zoom hang out with your friends in Argentina and Buenos Aires? Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. yeah. So you could just say, you know, you know, you could just start talking about it. And maybe after a couple of Zoom calls of talking about it, you know, then maybe you could say, could I, could I read a little passage to you guys? I'd love your feet. You, you know what I mean? So it's a, it's a slow process. It's face to face. Okay. like this you know what i mean it's personable you're very personable you're wonderful to listen to so i would think that doing um a face-to-face -face kind of thing would be better than sending an email okay just, you know which is kind of distant you know just talk to them about your writing maybe tell them the story of one of your plays or one of your works cool. just talk about it so you're not asking them to read anything you were asking them just to, to listen to you. Okay. You, you know what I mean? You see what I mean? So slowly, gently ease them into this, you know, sort of revealing yourself as a writer, not because we're worried about what they're going to think, but it's a lot for people to process. And I want you to, you know, I want your friends who love you to have an opportunity to receive it in the appropriate way. So it's just a lot, you know, so. I Yes, I know. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, oh, okay. And then you're asking them to read something. And then, you know, I mean, unless they're like literary managers or, or, or they own bookstores or, you know, do they anything like that? Do they do you have a lot of writers in your in your friendship group? When I when I was in Argentina before at the first years of my marriage, I work as a writer in Argentina. So there are some oh. professional yes. Okay, okay. So just, you know, just a conversation. Just talk to them about it. Okay. You know okay. what I mean? And then they'll be like excited, you know, and then maybe, maybe you want to, could you read something I've written? That kind of thing. Sure, sure. Send it, you know, can we then talk about it on Zoom? Sure, <laughs> sure. You know, eat, you know, just give them an opportunity to respond in a loving way, because you don't want to catch them off guard. That's all. Is it Thank you very much. It sounds like yeah. Yes, 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 yes. And, and I love how, how you find because I am I have this situation that I go from here to here, <laughs> and I love that you you go like with the flow. I am learning. I yeah. like that. Well, we all are. Me too. I'm learning too. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Thank you. Melania. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Um. All right. Up next, we have Emmanuel. Are you there? There you are with the cool yes. background. Hi. That's, that's Zoom. Yeah. Um, so thank you very much. First of all, um, I've been doing this for many, many weeks and it has been literal, a literal lifesaver. So thank you so much. And thank you to everyone who's asked all these questions. I finished a first draft of a play and I bought a timer and... <laughs> And it's like my prized possession, which is really silly, but I'm so excited to have it. <laughs> anyway, um, so thank you very much for sharing that excitement of, about timers. Um, so I have a question. Uh, there is a musician that I'm going to be working with, and he is asking me to write the lyrics for pieces that he's going to write for a choir of 16 to 18 year olds. And he would like, he would like them to learn something. He would like them to have fun. And he wants to talk about climate change, capitalism, like all of these big things, because he wants all, he wants them to learn about all of these things. Um, and he wants them to have fun, which is great. Um, but my question is, so he's, he's been sending me these texts that are quite heavy and quite, you know, capitalism you know and look at what we've done and we've destroyed the planet and oh, like you know everything is very true um but I was wondering because you've talked a lot about finding the character and then the themes will later maybe erupt in the writing but this is 
the opposite where I'm given like these quite heavy themes and I guess I want to turn it into a story like how to find the lightness how to find the playfulness and still um talk about these themes I guess and respect what he's saying that he wants these kids to learn about about um all of these things Uh uh-huh that's that's a great question so I'm assuming that you know you're familiar with his music right Yes, yes. Okay, and he's like a, a friend or a, a, a colleague yeah. or you, you, you okay, yes, a good both. friend you guys can talk about. Okay, great. So, and there, I, you said there's 16 to 18 year olds, is that what you said? Yes. 16, 18 children. No, so that's their age. That's their age, sorry. Yeah, there's going to be about 70 of them. There's a choir of about 70, 70. of them. Great. Yeah. A lot. I mean, what crosses my mind first is that the, the, what, you, what you write is going to have to be singable, especially with 70 people. That's interesting. Okay, so I would, you know, um, get your body into it, Emmanuel. You know what I mean? Get, you got to get your body into it. And don't worry, you know, I say, sure, you know, the, the th- I, theme comes later, character comes first. The character, you've got the characters. The characters are a, a whole bunch of I mean, 70, 16 to 18-year-old people who have concerns, who, mm-hmm. if they're anything like the kids I know and hang out with here, they're, they're in their bodies, you know what I mean? I mean, which doesn't discount the fact that they're very smart, but they're in their bodies, okay? They're alive, all right? So get in your body and start talking about these things. I don't know your friend's music at all, but I think there's a r- lot of fun ways to talk about climate change and, and justice and, you know, doing the right thing. And I mean, humor and rhyme and rhyme can make it captivating and rhyme can make it stick humor can make it fun and fun can draw more people in you know um i think you can certainly have a lot of fun with it he's sending you texts are those the words that he wants in what you're writing or just no no they're just basically he that's what he wants to say you mean and it's quite heavy that's that, what the, the, that's the gist of yes like climate change is fucked up like yeah yeah <laughs> okay yeah. okay capitalism has, is fucked up like, yeah, people are bad fucked, you people know? are bad yeah i mean you know okay well um destroyed the planet has, right has he has he written any of the music yet um i know his music very well so and and he's very open and he's given me a kind of a through line and they're going to be different styles so there's going to be like an aria there's going to be like a slam piece there's going to be like a right. groove piece it's mm-hmm. going to go through all different styles great so if he if he can give you can he give you any of the music yet um i mean just yeah he, he um i know not not definite music i don't think but i um i know his style so i think okay Okay. I can okay. maybe pick a piece out and yeah, yeah. His pick, previous stuff. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Pick a piece out of some of his previous stuff uh, in the style of whatever he's talking about—an aria, um, a, an opera aria, right? Um, a yeah. slam piece. You know, pick a piece out and start just throwing down words. Have fun. You have fun with it. If you're going to have fun with it, then the 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 singers, the performers are going to have fun with it, and the audience is going to have fun with it. Um, don't worry about the subject. Just think of these are people talking. I mean, get, I mean, really, I, I keep saying it, get in your body. Once you start sitting like this, yeah. okay, I'm going to talk about capitalism <laughs> and capitalism is bad. And that's not a song. That's a, that's a, um, you know, right? Yes. Put on some of his music. Start yeah. dancing around. Does it have a beat? I hope so. Right? Oh, please. <laughs> please right have some fun i mean already we're having fun and we're not even talking about anything you know you know what i'm saying do you you know what i'm saying yeah get into your body turn on some of his music get a good beat going and if it, it what's one word that he has given you in his text just one word give me one word any word capitalism that's right the big can you one. say that seven times Yeah. It's interesting. Yes. 
right? And then there's the okay. Zizek quote, you don't hate Monday, you hate capitalism. Oh, think about it. Mm. Huh. Yes, yes, <laughs> tell the truth. <laughs> Just kidding. Look, Audrey's done. We got Audrey done. I don't know. You know, I'm not you. I don't know. I don't know anything about your project, but I do know that you can have a good time with anything. All right. Turn yes. on the music. Get in the groove. Get out of your chair. Get in your body, and start <laughs> moving around. Okay. That's great. Okay. Yes. I'm having put fun. the fun first. That's great. Fun Thank first. You. Yeah. Yes. Fun first. Oh, I should have just said that. Fun. Yeah, <laughs> fun first, done. But then you never would have written the capitalism song and what would be stuck in my head for the rest of the day? I don't know. All right, we're going to call on somebody else. <laughs> Carla, you're up next. Uh, hi. Hi, everybody. How are everyone hey, doing? Carla. Hi. Um, hi, everyone. I, I have uh, gotten slowly back into the writing bandwagon. Um, so that's good. Uh, but I'm having some issues with, I know you always say character comes first, but I'm, I'm writing a first draft of a novel, but I feel like my character, everything that's happening, I find everything that's happening very interesting, but I feel like it's just happening to her and there's, she's not taking part in the action. And so I'm like, I wrote down exercises to like talk about character and like, I don't know, write down, I don't know, her biggest secret when she was 13, things like that. And and I just can't seem to get her moving. I don't know. Uh -huh. And so I'm just having trouble with that. I didn't know, I don't know what to do, if there's anything. Yeah, in the last chapter I wrote, she does a little something, but I just felt like it's not enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 The, I think that's, that's a great yeah. question, Carla. I mean, let's, let me be clear. For me, character comes first unless it's like a dumb joke about i'm going to write a riff on the scarlet letter and call it fucking a that had nothing to do with <laughs> yeah that. that was just a dumb joke i was telling myself right so but usually i think about what what's the character that's what i latch on to um, but if you're latching on to plot pieces that's okay too okay. they're all rivers lead to the sea you know what i'm saying so whatever okay. works for you that's number one mm. um, but you it sounds like your character, your concern, because your character isn't doing things. She doesn't have agency. She's not. Mm -hmm. So there might be something she wants very much, but she's not doing anything to get it. So she's just right. kind of sitting. So how do you activate her? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Right? right. Okay. So, so, I mean, for example, she's sitting in her house. She wants to buy some almond milk or something i don't know hmm. so she's gonna go to the corner store so she's so then you have a scene where she's going to the corner you know what i mean so think of it very in very small segments what does my character want what is she trying to get what is she trying to do hmm. how is that plot the uh that plot beat that i really love how does that dovetail with her story her journey hmm. Okay. Does that help? Does that help at all? I think so. I think for me, I guess it's maybe breaking it by chapter, um, because it's more of like in my story, she arrives into this new place and she's having an adventure in this new place she's never been to, and all these crazy things starts happening and she kind of gets swept away with it. But then she slowly starts to realize, oh, this this thing that's going through it's helping me become who I want to be. So maybe okay. it's about identity. I don't know. I guess okay. I have to ask myself those questions. Yeah. Well, you, know, well, you see, you jumped from your character to what's happening yeah. to her to what the story is about. So those were huge yeah. jumps. So I would just yeah. say maybe dial it back. Your mm. character, think of Little Red Riding Hood. Mm. What does she want? You know what I mean? What is she doing? What is she mm. going through? You know, think of the simple stories. Tell yourself the the character beats of si very simple stories okay? okay you don't have to know what it's about you know you don't have to write the blurb that goes on the back of the novel mm. okay just tell me the story okay think of story like like if you think of the story thackeray's novel vanity fair and i haven't read it in like 80 years so i probably won't get it wrong but there's becky sharp and she's she she wants to have a wonderful life you know so she gets a job doing this and then she gets a job doing that and then she's friends with so and so and then she's you know she's doing things she's doing things because she wants to have an incredible life 
You see what I mean? So she's mm. actively making choices and doing things and grasping onto things and letting other things go. Okay. okay. So think about what your character wants, you know? Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. I but think so. Also, were you having a little bit of trouble working like a week ago? Am I remembering you correctly? Or yeah, I, 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 I'm having surgery on Monday. So I been dealing with a lot of that and yeah. unemployment and just a lot of issues. And so I dial it back completely. I stopped writing for a bit and then slowly I kind of been inching myself back. Like I would write like maybe 30 minutes of like 10 minutes a day, like 10 mm -hmm. minutes, three times around the day, like slowly. And so now mm -hmm. I'm coming back to it slowly, but I, feel like that's an issue that I've had since the beginning in terms of the writing. And so, yeah, I just been very, that's why early I, last week I felt, I felt like I fell off the bandwagon because I just couldn't figure out what I was writing or what I was doing. Mm -hmm. And so I've been slowly issuing back. And so I've noticed that issue with the character. And so that's why I was like, maybe I can figure it out. But yeah, it's been, it's been a very crazy time in general for everybody but like mm -hmm. these past week it's just been too many too many things at once calling my attention mm -hmm. yeah I, i'm thinking that i'm gonna i'm thinking you've got a lot going on to my mm -hmm. mind you've got a lot going on you have surgery on monday i mean we're all going to be thinking of you and sending mm -hmm. you really really good energy you know um <laughs> you have a lot going on take a breath <laughs> you you will get your writing done if you keep putting the time in you're going to, you will get your work done. It's guaranteed. Mm. Okay. You're going to put the time yeah. in. You're going to get your writing done. We'll be here to encourage you or nag you or remind <laughs> you. Okay. We'll yes. be here. We'll, we're your squad. We'll be here to make sure you yeah. get your work done. And you've got a lot, you've got a lot on your plate. So not to worry about figuring everything out about your character right now. You know, she, they will be waiting for you when you get done with your surgery and then you you'll have time to go okay now let me take another look at that character you know maybe yeah. just talk to her maybe t in the next couple of days it's uh it's wednesday now you have surgery on monday maybe just have some conversations with her just 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 like she's a friend you know you're just talking to her yeah some of the exercises i did i did them by hand because i journal mm -hmm. so maybe doing mm -hmm. more of that might be helpful mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. Lower the bar, lower the bar, keep it simple, keep it easy, take it easy, you know? Yeah. And we'll ramp yeah. it up. We'll ramp, help you ramp it up when you're clear of your surgery, you know? No yeah. We'll be here. Yeah. Okay. Should be all right. It's a simple one. So okay. hopefully it should all be okay. But thank you okay. so much. <laughs> so much. We love you. We love thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, all right. Up next, you've got Charles. Hi, Susan. <laughs> Charles is doing a dance. Hey, man. Yeah. I don't know why I didn't find this class before. So uh, this is my second day. Oh, so, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I uh, I can hang out with you guys more. So anyway, um, I'm, I've been here in the U.S. for 14 years. Oh. I'm from Lebanon. So I lived three wars, civil wars in Lebanon. And I'm an actor. Uh, I did study writing, but I never wrote. And I, you know scripts or anything now during the pandemic I start writing more and I'm I was taking exercises with my friend Marlena Nichols she takes actually your class and she told me about you and then uh, and when I was in Lebanon every movie I see Lebanese filmmaker they would do something about the war and I would judge it we're like ah, another movie about the war oh come on well guess what now I'm in that phase where everything I'm writing is freaking coming out about the war and Although I have a lot of ideas and a lot of things, characters I want to write and comedy and stuff like, like that. But I don't know, I'm in that dilemma where should I continue writing all these stuff so it goes out of my head, my system as like feeling an onion to go to the core, do something more, or should I, I don't know, I'm very like, I'm enjoying what I'm writing, but at the same time it's about the war and I don't want to be like, oh, war, 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 uh. so. That makes sense. <laughs> I love your question. And it's it's a beautiful question. Um, and it's a complicated question because I mean, I, I, I mean, I, well, I really feel for you and I'm glad you're here and I'm glad you're here, here, here with us. Um, 
you know, it's like, it's like shit, you know, you can write about anything you want and yet you're writing about the war. You know, exactly. I mean, I say to myself, shit, I can write about anything I want. And I'm writing about like justice for people of color. Oh, shit, man, why don't I just write about like, you know, like just something, anything. Like, <laughs> right. you know, anything. Yeah, you know, like, there I am, justice for, <laughs> it's like shit. <laughs> right, you know what I'm talking about. Um, yeah. So brother, maybe it is your lot in life right now to write about what it is that you're writing about mm -hmm. and that's okay you join folks like me and like others who are writing about difficult heartbreaking things and we need i feel like i gotta help move this thing along you know and not everybody can do it. Not even people like you or like me or what it doesn't, it's not about color or whatever. It's about heart. And if you are the, in the group and you have the heart and you are called, you answer the call. And so here we are and you're not alone. You know what I mean? And not yeah. every, and what's the thing is you're going to write like three awesome things about the war. And then you're going to write like a romantic comment. People are going to be like, what the fuck? You know, <laughs> Why'd you, you better write about the war. And you're like, no, I'm writing about, you know, so you got to, you got to answer the call. Right. If the call is saying, write about the war, write about the war. If the call is saying, here's something else that you might enjoy, right. You know, then you, you, you really have to answer the call. That is, that is your lot. Yeah. in life that is your fate that's your duty that's your calling it is a beautiful and difficult life but yeah. you will this... know you will know you won't want to trade it for anything else totally true totally true yeah and i can't wait to see your work yes <laughs> Yeah, and I'm so glad you're here. I will dance. Yeah, yeah, you're really, we can dance, because that's the thing, and people will go, people, I mean, look, Charles, how can you be writing about the war and be so cheerful, right? Because yeah. the bur that's... it is a burden, but it is light. It is. Because you're not alone, because the spirit has taken you by the hand, and it said, come, Charles, join me. You must sing this song, Charles. Wow. Thank I you. need you. I need you to sing the song. But we all have a version of that. Whoever we are and whatever we look like and all that, doesn't matter. We all have a version of that. And to turn away from that is 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 okay. We can't always answer the call, but that you are answering it, I'm very proud of you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. That's... Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you, Thank Charles. You. Can't wait to read your work. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Do that. You got the right spirit, man. That's right. Look, Melania's dancing. Yeah. Awesome. Uh -huh. awesome. That's right. Mm. <laughs> all right. We've climate got about... change. Climate change. Capitalism. Capitalism. We got it all. We got it all. This is a great song. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's horrible. <laughs> please. Manuel, you write it. Please write it. Okay. Please. Please. Um, we have about eight minutes left. We're going to go to Kim. Hi, I'm inside. Can you hear me now, please? Hi. Okay, good. <laughs> this, this, uh, this question kind of piggybacks on everybody else's question, which I didn't have a question. I'm listening to everyone, and I was uh, also doing something pretty heavy in this um, uh, piece that I'm working on, and I was wondering about when characters all kind of want the same thing so for example if everybody is in an aa meeting or if everybody is in a safe house they all want to be better they all want to how do you have individual characteristics i mean i know we all do but when you're in that space and you want kind of the same thing how how do you kind of show the individuality of everybody and what their needs and what their wants are mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well uh, that's a great question, Kim. And you, you got to listen a little bit more closely, right? So okay. you listened enough to say, okay, for example, they're all in an AA meeting or in a safe house. Okay, well, they're, this is like AA meeting. They're all, no. okay, so one can guess they all want, you know, sobriety. But, right. or and, what does sobriety look like to that character? Right? Oh, what does sobriety right. look like to that person? That Thank person you. over there might have a, might have, this person might be an old timer, you know, you know, I don't know, many years. This person might be a newcomer, right? What is their journey up to that point, right? So we listen a little bit more closely. Does that make sense? 
You're fucking amazing. You just the way that you zero in on shit. I just you're like a preacher and a writer and my sister and my mentor and we're the same age and then I feel bad because we're the same age and you've got accomplishments and I'm sitting on my ass on my couch. But I just I love you. The way you're just fucking amazing. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm here. I'm here to show, you know, I'm here. We it's a circle. We know that, right? I'm so it's grateful that you're here. It's a loop. We're here to support each other. Let's remember that, that this, you're reminding me of what I need to know. Every question that you ask everybody reminds me of something that I need to say out loud. And we know God, spirit works for people. And here we are. We're just, we're just doing the circle. You are my favorite human. Thank you. Thanks, God bless you, Kim. Kim. Thank you. Back at you, sister. I love you. <laughs> um, all right, we've got about five minutes left, and we're going to Karima. 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 Hi, can you hear me? How you doing? Yeah. yeah. Hi, Susan Laurie. How are you? Well, thank you, Karima. Good to this see you. Very, very quick. You just did something wonderful for me. When you said, answer the call. I'm, you confirm, I'm, I'm, you confirm something that I needed to hear and that I needed, you just confirm because I find that I always write about certain, the certain subject and you be saying, well, and I can write other things, but it doesn't pull me the same way. And I would say, well, why do you keep? And like he was just saying, when you said answer, the call, it was like, she just said it. I mean, I'm a Christian. I know you're, you don't practice in that way. But it was like, preach to me. You know, like, it's like, hallelujah. You just set me free to just say, okay, hey, this is just what you do. You know, so thank you. That's, I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you, Karina. Right? It, it's so great. And just, you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm all of it, you know? like Christian, I, I have my yoga practice because God is, God is great and great yeah. to me means big and big to me means yeah. like huge <laughs> and like, yeah, right? Yeah. So he, she, them, the many faces, the Axis Boldest Love, Jimi Hendrix album, you know, all those faces of God, you know, it's all, it's all, yes. I'm saying yes to it all. Thanks. Well, thank you. Thank you, sister. Miss Karima. All right, well, we've got about three minutes left and we don't have any questions. And so I'm wondering. Should I read from Helen, Helen Keller? Keller? Yeah. Helen Keller, Helen Keller. Helen Keller is a badass. That's not what this book says, <laughs> but she's sister's a badass. So here, so let's see, I'll read these little things. Um, she's talking about optimism how she is full of optimism. Helen Keller, who uh, was born in the 18 something or others and uh, uh, who, uh, when she was about a year and a half old, was stricken with an illness and left without her sight and without her hearing. M many of you know her story. Um, really cool, badass woman. She says, how many, how many good people, prosperous and contented, have looked around and saw nothing but good, while nations of their fellow people were bartered and sold like cattle. She's talking about the 1800s. She's talking about slavery. When people looked around and they saw nothing but good, meanwhile, people were being sold as slaves. No doubt, those people were comfortable optimists who thought that the abolitionists who were working hard to free the slaves were only meddlesome fanatics. I distrust the rash optimism of this country that cries, hurrah, we're all great. This is the greatest nation on earth. When there are grievances that are calling loudly for redress. This is what I would call false optimism. Optimism that does not count the cost is like a house built on sand. I read that I'm like, sister's a badass, right? She was thinking about those things way back in, this book was published in, in 1900 or so, 1903, I think it was. She was thinking of those things. Um, 
and how it talks about how she struggles. And I, I, I was thinking that like, if she struggles with, with doubt and, and, and pain and difficulty and can be an optimist and feel joy and love in her heart, um, she can be one of the people that we call on when we are feeling doubt and confusion. Um, people like her. So I was just reading her today and feeling like, she also talks about work and how doing work, working, helps her be an optimist, helps her feel optimistic. There's something very beautiful about doing your work, even if it's modest. And she considered her work modest work. I don't, but she did. And how just, she says, my work helps me feel my optimism. So there's something about when we do our work, whether it's writing or anything or whatever our work is, if you're an accountant, whatever it is, and it, it actually, it's, it's the spirit moving through you. It's allowing the spirit to move through you and how that can help us feel, feel that joy, that beauty that is out there in the world. Um, and I'm not saying that difficult things aren't out there. I'm just saying the more we can feel the joy and the beauty, um, you know, the better. Is Mo sending us a, a sign? Is she doing it? I can't, but I can't, it's, it's like, because it's like backwards, forwards. Say it, Mo. Just say what you're thinking. No, she can't, because she's not, she's muted. Can you unmute, can you unmute her, Audrey? Oh, there she is. Oh, I have little rainbows dancing all around my room from a string of um, crystals in the window, and I was just trying to send one. Thank yeah. You. Thank you. Thank you, Mo. I mean, we need that energy, right? It, it, we might in our cooler moments think it's corny and dumb and all this shit, but um, it is, it is uh, beautiful stuff that we can come together and share with each other. Yep. You know? It's 601. SLP, you're the best. Thank you, can't special guest, to... Helen Keller. <laughs> thank you to special guest, Helen Keller. We'll email yeah. her a thank you afterwards. <laughs> thank you all so much. As a reminder, you can sign up by 3 p.m. Eastern every single day on the HowlRounds website or the Public Theater's website, and I will send you a link between 3 and 4.30 p.m. Eastern, and we will see you tomorrow. Thank you. Mwah, mwah. Everybody. Love you guys.